Yo, what's going on, Warriors? Oh, I'm back. I'm back like I never left. Missed you guys. Hope you missed me too. I'm not wasting any time to get straight into this thing. I'm talking about Street Fighter, the story mode, the DLC. It's not an expansion, it is DLC straight up. And the fact that it was free, it better be free. First of all, what I want to address, I'm going to be talking about the story mode, what you get with this new June update, or you could call it July update, because let's be honest, it came out June the 30th at like midnight. So that's pretty much July the 1st, whatever Capcom are used to it. So I want to talk about the season pass, its contents, and how it relates to the DLC. If you buy the season pass for Street Fighter V, you are going to get all the extra characters that are coming out for DLC for this year. Alex, Abuki, Guile, Balrog, Urien, Jury. I think that's it. If I missed out any, oops. Those characters, you will get them. And you will get their premium outfits. But you won't get premium outfits for characters like Kirin, Amika, Ulora, Zangief, Dalsim, Nash, Vega, Balrog. You're not, well you can, you're not going to get outfits for any of those characters, the premium outfits. So it's essentially this season pass only gives you access to some of the content, not all of it. And that is actually bullshit because, okay, if they say the fight money, which is earnable currency in the game, gives you access to some stuff, fair enough. But the season pass? I bought the season pass, yet I only get access to some of the DLC that's coming up this year. Other parts of that DLC, you have to pay for it separately. What kind of shit is that? What is that? That's rubbish to me. That is shit. Whatever, man. Capcom, we know what they do. They nickel and dime at every opportunity. They don't appreciate the fact that the fans are supporting them. I bought Street Fighter early because I wanted to support them. I knew I wasn't going to get into Street Fighter like hardcore on it now, right? I'm too much, I'm too, I'm way too busy. I'm way too busy in my life to sit down and grind on Street Fighter. Although I do still play Street Fighter, of course, I love Street Fighter. But I have a busy life schedule which allows me not to sit and play games as much as I would love to, right? So, I don't know, man. I just say whatever. Capcom. Good shit. Good shit for not appreciating your fans that try to help you out, see that you're in a bind financially and try to help you out and buy your games just to support you. Whatever. So, that done, we're putting that aside. You know how I feel about that. Season pass, now that I know what it, cont it contains, the season pass, I would not recommend you get it. It is a 4 out of 10 worth content. So essentially, it's worth is a rating of 4 out of 10. I recommend you don't get the season pass. Worthless. So I want to go on to the story mode. The story mode is actually godlike. It flushes out a lot of characters. Ryu. We already knew Ryu. But this shows us more of the fist. Why he's always looking at his fist. Why he's always pursuing the fight. It's godlike, man. I mean, some characters don't get flushed out as much as others, like Ken doesn't get much airtime, but he does. They do show enough of all the characters: Chun Li, Ken, Laura, Vega, Balrog, Charlie, all those kind of characters. And another thing I wanted to talk about, yeah, just quickly brush on this, yeah, is how they did that character, Helen. I think that was ridiculous. She was the character in that like, third strike, because you know in third strike, essentially, at the very end of the story mode DLC, spoilers, if you haven't played it, you can switch off now, or come back in another time, or just skip this bit. Whatever's good with you, but both you stick with me. So, the character, Helen, which is like the Russian woman that is always with Nash, and that's, you know, helped him out at the very beginning, when you saw him who'd gotten out of the coffin, and there was a Russian lady. 
she was actually the character from Third Strike. When Gil comes out in like a monk's robe, and you see like these kind of like other monks with like star symbols in their faces, there's a lady that is behind Gil in a black suit with a short skirt and blonde hair. That was Helen. That was ridiculous. Go play Third Strike, get to the end Gil fight, and then watch the intro of Gil when he comes in, there's a lady behind him. That's Helen. I think that is godlike. And she was working for Urien before she was working for Gil. Or she might have been a double agent. Working for Gil, but then pretending to be with Urien. Pretending to take Urien's side, but she's never left Gil. Or she could be with Urien, and then she switched to Gil, but she could be going back to Urien because Urien knows that she's going to pretend to side with Gil. Whatever. Whatever. We'll see what happens. But yeah, it's, it's godlike, man. I like the story mode. The way you see Urien, Urien was behind the resurrection of Nash. That's why you saw like the, like the, the third eye in Nash's head. It is true. It's the same as Urien. They said like something about Urien has got like a special technology that he used to resurrect Nash or whatever. So I thought that was really cool, man. Like Nash's story was actually the best element of the whole story mode. N Nakali's one was good. Ryu was good. Kami's one was excellent with the Capri. Jewelry, the way she was like a little... She was like a little Sea Viper. I wish I saw Sea Viper in there. I hope she's in the next one. We see Abel. So it's, the story mode is it's, it's good. It's good at introducing characters that we've not played yet. A.K.A. Yuri and Jury. And it's good at showing us characters like Kami. The Dolls. The Capri. It is, it's wicked, man. It's a really good DLC. I definitely recommend that you try it out. Is the worth getting now as a single player experience game? I'll be honest with you. No. You will potentially have to wait till, I would say, next year. If you want a complete game that's only going to get better, then I would say wait till end of 2017 when they release when all the season 2 packs are released and it's got story mode and there's more colors and there's more premium costumes and there's a lot of fun stuff to do offline i don't really care about this shit because i only play the game online anyway when i do play the game even though i don't practice but i still like the game and challenging is fun that's all i want to do i don't really i don't i don't say i don't care about story mode story mode is excellent and it's fun but it doesn't really affect me too much. I paid for it. I fucking love it. Urian is godlike. Jury looks good. I I hate her censorship. They blatantly censored her outfit like here. On her dress, right? But you see here is meant to be um no clothes, right? But they put like um it's rubbish, whatever man. Whatever. Censorship strikes again. So yeah. Story mode for Street Fighter, as a standalone, I would give that an 8 out of 10. As the game as a whole is right now, I would give it a 8.5 out of 10. And yeah, if you've got the game, definitely download it. Definitely take the time to try it out and play it because it's, it's really good. It adds a lot. You get to learn about a lot of the characters. You start to feel more for the characters after the DLC, I'll be honest with you. I wanted to play Kami. And I wanted to play Charlie. So, yeah, it's a really good game, really good DLC, and yeah, eight and a half out of ten. Alright, Warriors, I want to hear what you guys got to say about it. So, tune in, keep giving me the subscribe and the shares and the likes and all that kind of stuff, and yeah, let me keep doing this thing. Alright, Warriors, to my next video, stay blessed.